Okay, now we're going to jump into uh, taking measurements for use of MSO um, when you're going to do a subs plus main optimization. Um, you know, previously I said that measuring for subs was uh, pretty much identical, um, whether you're doing a subs or a subs plus mains op or, uh, optimization. And I was a little bit incorrect on that. Um, I forgot that the LFE channel and we're going to talk about this in a minute, is by default, it's 10 decibels hotter than your mains channel. And when you get those big differences in result, um, that can really throw the optimizer's calculations off. So we're going to make a small change to how we measure subs when we're doing a subs plus mains integration. I'm going to go through that here uh, in, in detail, but I wanted to give you a heads up that I was incorrect on that previous, uh, previous two videos. So... Um, again, we're, we've, we've gone through all this, so we're going to jump into uh, how to measure for our subs plus mains. Um, and this is where I'm going to talk about some of those specific differences. A lot of it's the same, right? We're still going to only energize um, one sub at a time. Um, the same caveat applies if you're using a Y splitter. Um, for subs uh, plus your center and your mains, we still want to measure our main channels as... Uh, full range with no uh, with the subs muted so that we get their natural response without any help from the subs. Um, we want to make sure that we don't have any um, any settings or like call it some some you know I'll show you on my processor let me see if I can find it real quick. I think it's uh, under input config um, you know under my stereo. Um, I can do a left plus right plus sub, so that's like a sub plus mains when I'm in when I'm in stereo mode. Um, you know, some people might call it double bass or main plus LFE. Um, I don't remember exactly where that is on uh, on mine, but uh, you want to make sure that your speakers are set to. And again, I've got it, the way I've got it set here is I've got mine set to large. Um, that gives them the full frequency sweep, um, but we don't want any kind of 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 double bass or LFE plus main because that'll throw things off. Um, and then again, everything else is from the same as so you know, energize our subs one at a time. But I mentioned this earlier. This is the issue with using the LFE channel, and this is what we're going to work around. Is it's 10, 10 decibels hot compared to the bass channels um, when you're using a typical uh, surround decoder like Dolby um, or or DTS and things of that nature. So that would throw off optimizer results. But there is a really, really simple fix for this. Um, what we want is we want a frequency sweep, but we want it at the same measurement level as our subs without having to change our volume around so we keep things consistent. So the simple fix is to sweep our sub, or excuse me, to sweep our, our mains. In this case, my example is going to be a center channel. Um, to sweep our center channel, and then temporarily uh, cable the input of our mini DSP to the center channel pre-out rather than using the LFE pre-out that we normally have our subs connected to. Um, every receiver is a little bit different. Um, that's the easiest way to do it on mine. It's also probably the most foolproof way of doing it. It's moving one cable. Uh, back and forth. Um, the one thing that you'll pro that will want to do as well is uh, when you move the the subs to the center pre out, is just disconnect the speaker outputs for your center. Um, they don't you don't have to disconnect both of them. Um, it's a pretty easy, straightforward thing to do. If you're using an external amp, um, you're going to have to disconnect that pre out anyway, so you don't have to worry about disconnecting the speaker channel. Um, some of this is going to be a little bit uh, uh, AVR dependent. Um, but uh, again, with mine, the easiest thing to do is just uh, move that pre out over to the center channel. Uh, make sure my center channel speaker, I actually just disconnect the, the XLR output that goes to my amp for that, and then I can get a nice um, full range frequency sweep. Um, I am going to take uh, a couple of, I am going to take sweeps on the LFE channel just because I want you to see the difference between an LFE sweep of the subs and a 
full range frequency sweep of the subs. I accidentally closed out and didn't save our previous project. So um, I'm gonna remeasure the subs on, on LFE just to baseline those real quick. Um, I'll pause the recording while I do that. Um, and then I will come back and uh, we'll take a center channel and then we will um, show measuring the subs uh, and what that sp response looks like when it's measured on a full range channel um, and not uh, <clears throat> not the LFE channel. So um, before we get into that, same kind of math on the measurements. Um, in this case, we're adding one speaker in. We're going to do our four subs plus our center channel um, times one listening position. So that's five total measurements. All the same, nothing's changed on our mic position. I haven't touched the mic since I set it up um, uh, on the very first MSO, before the very first MSO measurements video. So, you know, it's been sitting there and hasn't been touched. But same caveats apply, um, same guidelines apply. So let's go ahead and, uh, and jump into it real quick. Okay, so I grabbed a couple of measurements. I've got them deselected um, so we can compare the, the LFE versus a full range. So the first thing we want to do is let's go ahead and measure our, our center channel speaker. We don't have to change anything to do that, really. Um, so we'll go to measure. Um, we're going to change the output over here to, to center. Um, and then let's go ahead and grab a, a full range uh, frequency sweep. So we're going to change the upper limit to 20,000 hertz or 20 kilohertz. And then again, let's... Uh, Make sure we name our uh, name our sweep appropriately. Appropriately here, um, again, always use the acoustic timing reference. None of that stuff has changed. Um, and then let's go ahead and, and uh, grab a measurement. All right, so now we have a nice full measurement. Um, when we export, we're not going to use any smoothing. Um, I just want to make this a little bit easier to, to look at, so I'm going to apply some variable smoothing to it real quick, um, just so my eyes don't hurt from seeing all of the all the whispers on the high end. So the next thing we want to do is temporarily we're going to move our uh, our LFE that goes to our cable that goes from our LFE to our mini DSP. So I'm going to move that to my center channel pre out. And um, that would, that's going to let me bypass the, the processor's base management completely. And uh, we'll be able to take a, uh, take a quick look at that. Um, you may be able to do it um, by just disconnecting your center channel. Um, mine won't let me do it without, uh, uh, it won't pass the, the, the signal the way that it really, I think it should. But it's just a quirk of my particular processor. So that's why I'm going to move that cable over. Um, you know, you sometimes uh, you'll see Austin Jerry over on AVS forum um, talk about just sweeping the center um, and disconnecting the uh, and disconnecting the cable, which is fine. Um, the problem on mine is that it requires a crossover to be set, and I want to see the natural responses of the speakers without any crossovers in place. So um, I'm gonna move that cable real quick, and I'll be uh, be right back. Hey, I got that uh, that cable moved over. It took like two seconds, really easy thing to do. So now we want to go and we want to sweep our subs um, the exact same way that we did when we were measuring on the LFE channel. Um, so let's go ahead and measure. Um, let's change this back to uh, 300 hertz. No point in asking our subs to do something that they're not capable of. Um, one key difference is remember we're using the center pre-out, not the LFE. So what we want to do is our output channel is going to be the center channel, not the LFE. So this is going to take the center channel output to our mini DSP, to our subs, um, rather than using that LFE output. Um, otherwise, it's pretty much the same. So I'm going to go through and uh, let me move this a little bit. Go ahead and mute all of my subs, except for the left front. Let's rename this. This is going to be my left front. And we'll go ahead and, uh, and run the sweep. So there's the left front. Let's repeat for the right front. All right, do the left rear. Thank you. 
And finally, ooh, oh, no, I was looking at the wrong color. Looks good. Finally, we'll do the right rear. All right, so I'm going to make some changes to this graph right here real quick. Um, I'm going to take the center channel off. And what I want to do is I want to compare the the LFE channels, the LFE measured channels to the non LFE measured channels. So I'm going to change this. This is uh, so you guys can see what we're talking about here from a frequency response perspective. So I'm going to clear everything, and I'm just going to pick one. I'm just going to pick one channel. So if we look at the LFE channel measured here. This is the LFE measured left front channel, if you can kind of see how I have this named, and that's the frequency response for it. Now I'm going to grab the regular measurement for the LFE, and you're going to see the response is really the same, right? It's the same shape, same kind of, same, generally the same shape, and I'll talk about why the shapes, the shapes are different. Um, but let's just kind of look at the lower frequencies. It's almost the same shape. But remember, there's a 10 decibel difference between that LFE channel, and that's what we're seeing. The darker color is the LFE, and the lighter one that I've got kind of highlighted in yellow now is the center channel measurement. That's what we want to see. We actually need that lower input, uh, or lower measurement level, rather, to make sure that when MSO runs, it does the proper alignment. Because if I have these things skewed, that 10 decibel um, difference is really going to mess up the alignment process between the mains and, uh, and the sub. The other thing to note is that my processor, it does have a configurable um, crossover, but it doesn't have a configure configurable LPF, low pass filter. So you can see that once we get to about 120 hertz, which is typically the most common um, you know, LPF value that's out there, low pass filter value, the original measurement, the, the measurements cross the original measurement goes below the new measurement because that new measurement is rolling things off. Excuse me, that original measurement is being rolled off by that low pass filter. So we do see a lot higher output. These weren't taken at huge volumes, which is why they're overall kind of low, but um, you can see the big difference between uh, the output on the, the one that's not low passed versus this one that's highlighted, which is currently low passed. So, um, a really simple way to compare all of them together just to kind of see the overall kind of really dramatic impact. Um, so I'm going to do a, a quick average of my originals. So this is, I'm going to average this out. We're going to call this the LFE average. Okay, and let me deselect everything. And then I want to do our regular subs. And this is only for comparison purposes. This is not something that you guys need to do. Um, so I'm going to call this non-LFE average let me clear everything out so this is this we, I, this doesn't take phase or anything to account this isn't trace arithmetic we're just looking at the average response and here's our lfe average um which is actually that's pretty good considering there's no you know eq or alignment or anything done with that um but what's important is you can kind of see how that how quickly that rolls off and if i look at the non-lfe average you can see I don't have that 10 dB hump and it doesn't roll off nearly as quickly on the high end. So again, that's just a demonstration point to, to make things a little bit easier for y'all to see. Um, if I can delete these, I can delete these. Um, I actually, if I'm gonna export this stuff, I don't need these LFE measurements either. The measurements that I need, let me turn these back on. Let me select everything. These are the measurements that I need. I'm going to change this back to 20,000 hertz or 20K so we can see the full data. This is the data that I need. Now, when I calibrate these things, um, I calibrate it at 80 hertz. Um, and you can see that everything lines up much better with 80 hertz than if everything was offset down here by another 10 dB. Uh, my subs are gain match. I just get variable, um, variable response uh, depending on the position at the MLP, which is what you expect with multiple subs. Um, so when they start to playing together, that was going to be a lot louder, um, when they're aligned and, and all tuned in. So, um, they'll end up easily coming up to this 80, 
80 decibel point once we kind of run the optimization and figure out where we want to cross things over. So that's it. That's what we need to do to get our um, to get our measurements for MSO when we're doing a sub plus mains uh, alignment. Um, I did just do the center channel here. If you're going to do, uh, if you prefer to align with the left and right, um, the only difference is rather than measuring just the center channel, um, you would ha take a combined measurement of the left plus right channel. Um, just so you know what that looks like is, um, I'll give this one a name. We'll call this L plus R. Um, in REW, you can actually choose an L plus R measurement. You want to take a 20K full sweep start it and now you have a combined uh left plus right sweep um to to use now notice that does play a few decibels higher overall than my my center channel which is the lower one you'll see that one that goes out full range is a few db higher it's because i've got two speakers playing that's why it's a little bit higher um, I'm not really concerned with that amount of error when I start aligning the subs because, again, I'm going to have four subs playing to kind of help reinforce things and do the alignment um, when I get that squared away uh, versus just two. So it's it's going to work itself out just fine. Um, general guidance um, is if you are doing alignment for um, home theaters to align with the center channel, align the subs at the center. Um, and if you're doing alignment more for music, then you would want to align with the, the left plus right. Those are guidelines. Neither one is right or wrong. Uh, you know, if you're a theater guy and you align with the the left and right, and it sounds better to you, roll with it, man. It's not no one's gonna. The home theater alignment police are not gonna come bang your door down and revoke your home theater nerd card. So, um, but generally speaking, that's uh, that's what we're gonna do. Um, also, the uh, oh no, totally forgot what I was gonna say. Cool, that works then. <laughs> well, that's it. Um, we've got measurements for uh, for use with um, with MSO to do a sub and mains alignment. The export process is the same. Same rules apply when we go to export this. We want to make sure we have no smoothing. Apply smoothing, and now we kind of see that's what's going to go out text to our text files for import into MSO. So that's it for the measurements video series. Um, next up, I hope to get the um, the sub plus mains integration video done, which a lot of people have uh, have asked for. So thanks a lot, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.